Hi guys, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a two and a half year old toddler named Kylie and I also have an eight month old baby named Mia. A very frequent question that I'm asked is how to organize a Montessori home when you are working with limited space. Some people are very worried that if they don't have an entire playroom to set up all of these shelves and activities that they're not going to be able to do Montessori properly at home. And that simply is just not the case. So from one busy parent to another, today I'd like to share with you five simple tips for implementing Montessori practices at home in small spaces. So my very first tip for you is to remember that less is actually more. In case you haven't already noticed, in all of the YouTube videos and gorgeous Instagram photos that you see online of Montessori spaces in other people's homes, there are often not a lot of things cluttered all over the place. The number of toys and activities that are out and available for your child at any given time should be limited and it should be age appropriate. So the younger your child is, the fewer number of choices you're going to need to make available to your child. As they grow older and their skills develop, yes, you'll need to provide a little bit more, but again, you're still limiting it. So just as an example, you can see behind me that this little shelf system that we use only has eight cubes in it. And for the longest time, that is the exact number of toys and activities that I had out at any given time for Kylie to use. Now that we have a baby in the house who is slowly becoming interested in toys and activities as well, we added a very small shelf right here off to the side of the camera frame. And again, that one only houses between six and eight activities activities for her as well. So the number of activities is very small compared to just kind of cluttering up all of the shelves and shoving two or three things into every single cubby just to make it all fit. It's actually easier for your child and more engaging for them when everything is very clearly delineated and there's a lot of space in between each of the items that you have set out for them on the shelves. So you don't really need a whole lot of stuff out at once, which begs the question, well, what do I do with all of the other stuff? And if you're new to Montessori, you might not realize that there's this whole shelf rotation thing happening. So these are not all of my girls' toys and activities. There are lots of other things that they have used in the past or that I might be procuring for them for the near future, but I don't keep them all out on the shelves. I have a series of just bins to be honest in Kylie's closet that are all labeled and I keep all of the extra items in those bins and I only take them out and bring them into the playroom when they are actively in rotation and the beautiful thing about that is when you bring out something old that they haven't seen for a really long time and you put it on the shelf it suddenly brings new life to the toy and they find new ways to be engaged with it from the last time that they saw it out this method also makes things a lot more cost effective because you're not spending so much money on constantly buying new things, you're kind of just recycling and breathing life into the old things. Because of the simplistic nature of the way things are laid out, how everything is very orderly and a place for everything and everything in its place, Montessori and minimalism often go hand in hand. So again, less is more. You don't need to worry about having 10,000 toys and activities available for your child at any given time. And if you are concerned about not having space for storing the items that should be out of rotation at the current time, then you can even limit yourself there and maybe just have one bin that you keep under a bed or up high in a closet somewhere and all of the things that you have need to fit in that bin. And as you procure new items and your children are getting older, maybe you decide, okay, well, some of these items they haven't used for a really long time or maybe they've just outgrown them maybe they're some of the baby toys and then you find a new home and maybe donate some of those older items to make room for the new items so there's definitely a way to do it you just have to be creative so remember the less stuff you have out and available at any given time the more your child is going to be able to actively engage with the items that you do have out so it's actually going to work to your advantage your environment is almost forcing you into that situation but it is entirely beneficial, I promise you. Tip number two is to work with the space that you do have. So just to kind of go to the most extreme of examples, if you literally are confined to one room, that is where you sleep, that is where your child plays, that is where you're eating, that is where you're spending the majority of your day is just in this one room, then yes, you are going to have to get a little bit more creative, but 
If you have one shelf in the room that has some things on it that you guys are using, then think about how you might find a space somewhere on that shelf that you can clear off of maybe some things that didn't really need to be there where you can make a space for a little basket of your child's activities or toys. If you do have the ability to have a separate small shelf just for your child in that room, fabulous, because then you've got your answer right there. That is where you would keep your child's activities and you would limit it to just that space. Let's say you have no room for any shelves whatsoever. As long as you can keep things neat and orderly and have a place for it, you're basically getting to the heart of what Montessori organization is really all about. So I mean, really, if all you have is just a space on the side of the room along a wall to place one or two or three activities, then I say that works. As long as your child can see the activities, they're presented thoughtfully, and they're organized, that's all that matters. If you do happen to have a little bit more space, but perhaps maybe not a whole playroom, maybe you do have a living room area with a couch or a coffee table or some kind of built-in shelving in the wall that already exists, maybe even some low window sills, work with those spaces. Find areas, again, like I said earlier, that you can kind of clear out maybe some things that are just otherwise collecting dust and don't really need to be there and find ways to incorporate some of your child's activities and toys in an aesthetically pleasing manner so that it doesn't look cluttered. It doesn't look like just junk and toys laying around. One of the things that I find is really helpful to remember is if it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing or inviting to you as the adult, it's probably not going to look very inviting to your child. So if you can find a way to thoughtfully present some of those toys and activities on some of your existing furniture, maybe the low part of a coffee table or next to the little space where your TV is located, what have you. If you can find a way to creatively put some of these things and help your child to learn that that is their space, that's where those things are stored, then your child will have a place for their things and it still looks aesthetically pleasing to everyone in the house. And then you don't have to worry about having an entire dedicated playroom for those things. It can just be the space where your family family generally hangs out most of the time anyway. This way your child is not cordoned off to a separate area of the house to go play by themselves. They can kind of still be involved in family life and what's going on, but they do have a little space for their things. Just as another example for you, I know that before my husband built this bookcase behind me for my daughter's first birthday, I was looking for a way to help make sure that her books were all front facing without crowding all of the cubbies in the shelves behind me and not having space for some of those other toys and activities. So what I actually did for a very long time before we had the bookcase was there's a low shelf that's right here next to me just off the frame and the windowsill was low enough that once she stood up, she could reach the books and pull them down herself. So I would select about four or five books and I would stand them up so that she could see the covers along the windowsill. And for, like I said, the longest time, that was her bookshelf. And there's nothing wrong with doing things like that. Again, the heart of this is that it's organized and your child is able to easily access these things independently. If you can make that work in the space that you have, then you've accomplished your mission. Tip number three is to use baskets to help organize things. You would be pleasantly surprised that a basket can kind of really corral all of the little pieces that might go along with an activity and help to make it look a lot more orderly. This is especially true if you're in a small space and you're going to be storing some of your child's toys and activities amongst your own things in say a common living area where everybody else's things are. So if you can find a really nice natural woven basket or something made out of wood that looks attractive and use that to store your child's pieces of the activity or maybe to have a couple of their wooden baby toys in, then that works. And if you're wondering where you might be able to find some of these really nice natural woven baskets and things, you can buy them obviously online and at stores, but they are a little bit more costly because they're made of natural materials and they tend to look nicer. So if you're trying to save money, the easiest place to go to find some of these baskets is to a thrift store. So many people get rid of these baskets thinking that they're just useless and they're junk or whatever but you know they say one man's trash is another man's treasure so I guarantee you if you go to a thrift store and you look around on their shelves maybe like in the home goods area or something related to the kitchen you'll find a lot of these really nice woven baskets that would work perfectly and look beautiful in your Montessori home. 
and there is no one out there saying that all of your baskets and whatnot need to match. In fact, I would venture to say that a lot of people would argue that having a nice little mishmash of different types of baskets and trays actually looks more pleasing to the eye because it's more interesting. Tip number four is to focus on practical life activities. I think a lot of parents get caught up in this idea that in order to do Montessori at home with your children, you need to have all of the space, you need to have all of the furniture, you need to have all of the wooden toys and all of the traditional materials, and that is simply not true. The essence of Montessori at home is involving your child in your family's everyday activities and making them feel like a valued contributing member regardless of how small they are. And the easiest way to do that is to, like I said, get them involved in practical life activities with you. And you don't need to set up this false window washing activity tray like you would see in a classroom. You're at home. You can just make do with the resources that you have. So if you're able to procure a smaller little spray bottle for your child and you happen to have a rag laying around, you guys can actually go wash the windows of your actual house together. And that is their practical life activity. It doesn't need to be set out on a tray for it to be considered Montessori. That's just silly. Same thing with baking and cooking in the kitchen. If your child wants to help you, find a way to get them up to counter height so that they can help you, whether that be standing on a chair if necessary, obviously with your supervision. And I know in small spaces, a lot of people say, well, I would love to have a learning tower, but I just don't have the space for it. That's okay. You don't need a learning tower to have your child help you in the kitchen. I have seen a number of fabulous, like folding collapsible stools that are actually pretty high that you could take out when your child is using it and store it away, maybe between the refrigerator and the cabinet, if you've got space or inside of a little closet in the hallway if that's the only space you have or even just off to the side behind your dining table against a wall. Again, just work with the space that you have and do whatever you can. Make it possible for your child to be involved. If they want to help you with the laundry, allow them to help you put clothes into the washing machine or have you pull the dry clothes out of the dryer and into the wash basket. When you're actually folding your laundry, maybe hand your child the pile of socks and see if they can match up the socks for you. If you are cleaning the dishes and you have a dishwasher, you can have them help you unload the dishes from the dishwasher. Or maybe you can just give them the little basket of silverware and the silverware tray and see if they can sort the forks and the spoons and the butter knives for you. There are just endless numbers of things that you do around your house every single day that your child honestly wants to be involved in. And many times in traditional households, they're just kind of shooed away to go play because they're made to feel like they're too little to do those things. But if you take the time to teach them and guide them and supervise them until they're able to do it themselves and show them how to do all of these things, they are going to be more than willing, happy participants. It's not about child slave labor, which I've actually had somebody comment on some of my videos in the past regarding all of the things that Kylie loves helping me with. And that is the key. You're not forcing them to do any of these things, but I think that you will find naturally, given the proper environment and given the proper opportunities, they want to help with these things because they have a feeling of success once they've done it by themselves. And that is enough internal motivation to keep them wanting to help you again in the future. Now, if there ever comes a time that your child expresses an interest and in maybe playing or doing something else, they don't want to help you with these things, then it's important that again, you're not forcing them. If you think of it more like an invitation, then it helps to keep you kind of in the spot where you need to be regarding your child's level of participation in these activities. So for an example, Kylie, when she was much littler, was very interested in helping me unload the dishwasher. Every single time, if I started unloading the dishwasher while she was playing and she heard the noises, she would come running into the kitchen and expect me to allow her to help, which was fine, and I did every single time. 
However, now that she's gotten a little bit older, she's a lot more independent. She's very into playing with her toys and her activities while I'm doing some of the cleaning around the house and we're both okay with that. On occasion, she will meander into the kitchen and ask to help me still and I always accept her offer to help, but I certainly do not go hunting through the house looking for her saying, Kylie, I'm doing dishes, I need you to come help me. That just does not happen. So again, the more you can involve your child in your practical life activities, that is probably the most important part of doing Montessori at home. And they can start doing these practical life activities like basically as soon as they can walk, sometimes even before they can walk, depending on what the activity is. Like a child can sit and try to match up socks with no problem, they don't need to be able to walk to do that. But a lot of these things are a little bit easier once they are able to walk. So be thinking in your mind, typically around the age of one and older is when you can really start to get them involved in these types of things. My fifth and final tip is to set up your home for independence the best that you can given the space that you have. So again, if you can procure one of those little folding step stools, that can be the perfect place for your child to sit and put on their shoes right by the door. If you have a small basket that you can keep their shoes in where they can easily access their shoes by themselves and choose the shoes that they want to wear that day, you're just one step closer to helping them be a little bit more self-sufficient with getting out the door every single day. If your child cannot get up to counter height in the bathroom to be able to see themselves in the mirror, there are even little tiny mirrors that you can purchase at like a dollar store that that you can put on the wall much lower down at their height so this way they can see themselves in the mirror in the bathroom while they're brushing their hair or brushing their teeth or what have you. So if you're just constantly thinking, how can I rearrange what we have? Or how can I add something a little small, like a small folding step stool, just to help them achieve that new level of independence that they might really be craving, then you are one step closer again to kind of achieving your goal in implementing Montessori practices at home. All right. So Mia just woke up from her nap. She wanted to make her cameo in today's Montessori video. So some questions that I urge you to ask yourself as you're considering how to make Montessori work for you in your small space is how can you enable your child to be more independent in the different areas of the house? So how can you set up or change your environment just a little bit to help your child get out the door faster in the morning for them to be able to access the things they need to do that? Do you have a small drawer or a cabinet somewhere in your kitchen that you can dedicate just to your child's silverware and plates and things like that and their cups. This way they can access those things independently. Is there a way in your bathroom that you can make a space maybe just for your child and their things or maybe bring things down lower to their level by adding something on suction cups inside the shower or tub? Or again, maybe affixing a small mirror down on the wall at their level. Think about each of the rooms of the house and again, how you can set it up for your child at their height, at their level, so that they can do some of these things on their own. Okay, Mia has had enough. She wants to be free to move around. But as you were saying, I know that we've already addressed kind of a scenario where everyone is in the same room, the entire family, and how you might approach setting that up. But let's say that your child does have their own bedroom, but you just don't have a playroom, and you're kind of thinking, well, can I use their bedroom to set up some of the activities? And Ideally, in a Montessori environment, they really say that the bedroom is kind of supposed to just be for sleep. It's supposed to be promoting relaxation and restoration, and there really shouldn't be any toys and activities available in there, aside from maybe a couple of them, just for the child to be able to entertain themselves either before they fall asleep or upon waking. But if that's the only space that you have, again, make it work. Don't feel like you're boxed into these rules and these ideals if they don't fit your situation. It doesn't make it any less Montessori. So if your child does have their own room and you're thinking, well, how should I set that up then? Then my suggestion to you, and this is kind of what I did with Kylie actually when she was littler, I would simply just have the floor bed in one corner of the room. I would have a small shelf that fits maybe four toys, five at the most, and maybe like a little basket of books off to the side if you don't want to put the books on the shelf as one of the items, and maybe even a small wardrobe area 
area if your child doesn't already have a closet to store some of their clothing items. But really, that's it. If the bedroom is for an older child, then you might also consider adding a small little work table if you have the space for it in the child's room. But for a much younger baby or toddler, that's not necessary. And as far as the shelf being in your child's bedroom, that is the place then that you're going to present new toys and activities. So you're going to have to rotate from those shelves and see about perhaps storing the extras that are out of rotation elsewhere. So in some of all of that, again, do not be fooled by all of the beautiful pictures that you see online constantly of these gorgeous Montessori spaces. In a perfect ideal world, yes, it would be wonderful if everyone could have all of that space to be able to do all of these things for their children at home. But reality is that's not the case. So we have to work with the space that we have and make do and there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you can be a little bit creative and find ways to help your child be independent and to involve them in what you're doing at home every single day and just kind of organize the general environment so that things look a little more orderly and your child is able to access their activities and toys independently, then you've done exactly what you need to do to make it work. If you guys have any questions about something that I've mentioned in this video today, or if you have any of your own tips for making Montessori work in small spaces at home, then please be sure to leave a comment down below and share it with us. And just in case you are new to my channel, I did wanna let you know that this video is part of a larger series called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori philosophies at home with your children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested interested in learning more about, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.